Hi, I'm Nadir Sharifi. I'm a prosthodontist in Chicago, and I'm here to speak to you about the dilemma of implants or root canals. When we talk about should we save the tooth, should we remove the tooth, a lot of times saving the tooth includes treating it with a root canal. And so this ends up being a discussion, a debate, a consideration, what should happen. No matter what the answer is to all of this, we should strongly develop a philosophy that we can be uh, have with a lot of conviction, understand when it is that we want to do the root canal and preserve the tooth, when it is that we would like to be able to extract the tooth and not save it. And if we can have conviction with that, that really helps us. Getting some science behind it, uh, some reference, some ability to be able to substantiate that allows us to have consistency, share it with our patients, our staff hears us say it again and again, and that develops a strong practice philosophy that we'll all be able to hang our hat on. When we talk about implants or root canals, we need to be able to understand how successful root canals are going to be. And to speak to how much this is a discussion of implants versus root canals, Fonzar's study on root canal success was published in the Journal of Implantology. It's not a typical location for that topic, but that's where we found it. And the initial root canal therapy was evaluated in 400 patients, almost 1,200 teeth. They evaluated them for a 10-year follow-up, and while they lost 20%, that's not a terrible number for a 10-year study. They determined survival, uh, root canal survival, which includes partial success, partial failure, and success. This is the survivability. You can Go into this article and look at this a little bit stronger if you like, but survival is a functional tooth for our patient. They found in this that the 10-year survival of the initial root canal therapy for a single tooth is 93%. 93% survival rate for the initial root canal therapy. We compare that with a recent meta-analysis that was completed by Carl and Albrechtson. They evaluated research of 35,000 articles on the Tyunite implant. Of these, they were able to glean out 106 studies that showed a 10-year survival rate, again, which includes partial success and partial failure as well as success, a 10-year survival rate of 95%. These rates here are very similar. There's also in this a lot of discussion about root canal treated teeth don't suffer bone loss, but implants do. And so Carl and Albrechtson address that in this meta-analysis, identifying that their five-year bone loss in their meta-analysis was less than a millimeter. The reason why it wasn't a 10-year was because there wasn't enough studies that had reported that for them to be able to provide us 10-year data. However, they also identified that there were 5% of the patients who were struggling with peri-implantitis. And that peri-implantitis is a progressive disease that could change this in a 20-year study. And it's the 20-year study where we get to learn about crown and bridge. DeBacker does very good long-term uh, crown and bridge studies. And here he's evaluating 134 uh, three-unit bridges and he's evaluating and determining a 20-year survival rate. For a three-unit bridge, the 20-year survival rate was found to be a surprisingly high 83%. And that's a really fabulous number for us to be able to share with our patients. Except we have to understand that those were with vital teeth. Those were with teeth that did not have an endodontic complication. What happens when we consider this for a root canal treated tooth? Will this success rate stay the same? Get a little bit better? Possibly a little bit worse? Or maybe a lot? And the reality is, is, that, the, is that the success rate drops almost 25%. When we have devitalized root canal treated abutments, a 20 year survival rate for a three unit bridge drops from 83% down to 60%. That's a fairly significant drop. What if it was a four unit bridge? One additional pontic. It's not talking about a cantilevered pontic, but just one additional pontic. Abutment, pontic, pontic, abutment. This four unit bridge has a success rate of 68, sorry, survival rate of 68% when we look at this in DeBacker's report over 20 years. 
for vital teeth. And while the three unit bridge was 83%, and this is about 15% less, we have to be realistic about that, that this extra pontic puts a lot more stress and strain on those abutment teeth, which means when those abutment teeth are treated with root canals, our success rate's gonna drop again. Now the success rate dropped about 25% for the three unit bridge. Unfortunately, it drops considerably more with the four unit bridge. When the four unit bridge abutments are devitalized and endodontically treated, the 20 year survival expectancy is only 25%. When we look at these numbers, we can see that our vital abutments do a better job of preserving our crown and bridge than our devitalized and root canal treated abutments do. So if we look at this with comparative survival rates and identify what's going on when we consider implants or root canals, we can see that the lone standing tooth can have a 93% survival rate at 10 years for an endodontically treated tooth. A three unit fixed bridge with endodontically treated abutments has a 60% success rate at 20 years. A four unit bridge with endodontically treated abutments has a meager 25% rate at 20 years. And implants have an individualized 95% survival rate at 10 years. And so when we look at a clinical situation such as this, and we're trying to determine whether this lower right first molar, tooth number 30, is going to be treated with endodontics, some form of a core, a crown, and seemingly here, crown lengthening as well, versus an extraction and an implant, we have to weigh that, that it's also possible to do the extraction and the three unit bridge. These are decisions that we'll all make individually, but when you have the science behind your decision making process, you'll be able to make them with conviction. So, is it truly one or the other? On the left, we have a single tooth implant restoration. On the right photograph, we have the same tooth position that was restored with endo, post and core, and a crown. Both of them show excellent outcomes for the patient. Both of them show good long-term survival rates in our literature. It's never going to be one or the other. Truthfully, it should always be one and the other. Both of these are viable solutions. Both of these are tools that we will use in our toolbox and provide these treatments to our patients. Both of these are going to give us good long-term survival rates to be able to be comfortable and provide with confidence these treatment options for our patients. So as we look here at the central incisor with root canal, post and core and crown, and the missing lateral incisor restored with a single tooth implant, the success rate of either of them gives us the confidence to be able to move forward with both these options. So let's put that comparative survival rate back on the screen here. And look at this one more time. Let's look at this with one more consideration as to should we be doing root canals on our teeth and preserve them or should we be extracting them and placing implants instead? And I don't think it is one or the other. Instead, it's an idealized implant location, such as this that you see right here. This idealized implant location is between two root canal treated abutments, two successful root canal treated abutments. Those two teeth are individually successful with a survival rate of 93% at 10 years. But if we had put in a three unit bridge, that survival rate will drop all the way down to 60%. So this is the most ideal location for an implant is between or next to endodontically treated teeth. It's implants and root canals. Thank you so much. I hope that's very helpful.